On this episode, I am very excited to be joined by a true national treasure. He's a member of the Premier League's 100 club, an FA Cup winner, and has one of the greatest England goal-scoring records of all time. Not to mention, he's one of the funniest men in football. This is the man, the myth, the legend, Peter Crouch. First of all, let's go back, Crouch, because not a lot of people know. You lived abroad as a youngster. <laughs> you lived in, was it Malaysia? Was your dad a market? Singapore. Singapore. So there was there any chance you could, can you play for Singapore? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? I think I was about, I was only three. I don't remember much no. of it. But um, my dad, yeah, my dad got, jo got a job abroad. Um, my mum was from Manchester. Mum and dad met in, in Manchester. My dad's from London. Uh, so I was born in Macclesfield. I was, I was a journeyman from an early age. <laughs> you ended up at Tottenham and obviously we played against each other mm. in the youth team. And, and just to give people a, a backdrop, your manager, Patsy Holland, is it true that your, your strength and conditioning regime, he asked you to have a pint of Guinness a day? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. yeah he did, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, God, the game's changed. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've stayed true to my word and I'm 42. <laughs> Put on any weight. Yeah, yeah, I still can't put on any weight. Do you know what? It's just genetics. Yeah. I've I've tried every trick in the book. You know, when yeah. creatine was in, I was on that protein shakes, the gym. Um, you know, I, I've always tried to bulk build. You know, I'm just unfortunately yeah. this is me. Do you, you must have, I mean, like all footballers, we loved our mm. our youth team. No, oh, time. best times. So when the shout came to get the opportunity, because I remember at Tottenham they had, a, they had a connection with the clubs in Sweden that you went. That's right. So yeah, he, he, they thought it was best um, for me to get out alone. Like Chris Shooton was there at the time and uh, David Pleat was sort of the director of football. Manager was George Graham, I think. And uh, yeah, I was, I was sent out alone and um, I loved it. But then you come back, Crouchy, 60 grand from QPR? 60 grand, yeah. It sounds like peanuts now, <laughs> don't it? Yeah, like, worse, worse. What, like not disappointment. <laughs> Do you think if you'd have hang around for another year, you would have got the opportunity at Spurs? No, no, no. That was the best thing I ever did. What was the chant? Something to do with... Um... Yeah, the, well, the chant was um, Only Fools and Horses um, <laughs> after my resemblance to Rodney. This... And it went along the lines of... Uh, God bless Peter Crouch. Long live Peter Crouch. Say magnific Peter Crouch. And then it went like, uh, no income tax, no VAT, 60 grand transfer fee. <laughs> <laughs> Black or white, rich or poor, Peter Crouch is going to score. That is a belter, isn't it? That is a belter. <laughs> that is... God bless Peter Crouch. That is a belter. <laughs> okay, that was one of my favourite songs, actually. That's one of my favourite <laughs> songs. <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, listen, you're in there. The fans loved you. You've had one of the, arguably the greatest footballing song ever made. You scored 12 goals. Yeah. It got relegated, but you must have thought to yourself you've arrived. And then... And then you had one more league with, with Pompey. Mm. How, was, how, how was that move? How did that come about? It was the first time I left home, really, other than the Sweden trip, was to go to Portsmouth. I remember I had Preston, Burnley and, um, and Portsmouth after me. And obviously, it was a big outlay at those times. I think it was Portsmouth's record signing. So yeah. I went for 60 grand, then all of a sudden it was 1.2 million. At that time, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was a lot of money for Portsmouth. And then um, I met Stan Turnan, who was the manager of Burnley. He, he, he's... he's a funny lad, his character. character yeah. yeah, he was amazing. I yeah. loved him. I loved yeah. him. Uh, David Moyes was at Preston. Shut so, up yeah, playing. No, 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 no manager. I was not that old, so. <laughs> 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 no, he was. Uh, he was manager. So he rang me at Preston, and all of them were such like all different characters. But like mm. as you as you know, like great managers. So you've had two seasons in the championship, scored goals. And, and then the Premier League comes calling Aston Villa. I remember you going to Aston Villa at the time. Mm. Did you feel like you had arrived? Then you scored on your debut. My home debut. Alan Shearer was up one end and I was up the other playing against Newcastle. Mm. I'd scored and then he scored. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'm a million miles away from that up the other end. And obviously, you know, Alan Shearer is Alan Shearer. But I was, wasn't, I felt like I was at Villa, but wasn't ready for the Premier yeah. League. I wasn't ready till I was 23. So that Villa stint, Came a little bit early for me. Yeah, I, I, I was signed for five million for Villa, signed for two million at Southampton. So like, it's obvious that I've yeah. struggled. Yeah, yeah. So I've gone to Southampton, but I'm in the Premier League. Right. And uh, I wasn't playing really. We were struggling in the league. Paul Sturrock gets stacked. Uh, Steve Wigley comes in. Uh, you know, he, he takes over. He's not really playing me. Anyway, he gets sacked. Yeah. The moment Harry came in, that's when things took off because he just said, "Look, you and Kevin Phillips will." will, will be our front two for the rest of the season. And I think I scored 16 goals after Christmas. There's always sliding doors moments as a footballer. Now, obviously, Harry coming in and 
sort of put his arm around you, igniting your Premier mm. League career. Do you think of what you would do if the season petered out and you didn't play? Would you have dropped yeah. down? Like, where would your career have gone? Do you think? Yeah, that was that was the point really where it was make or break. Mm. Uh, it was that it was that cutthroat. Um, yeah. You know, I'd have been back in the Championship if yeah. that's that Southampton stint hadn't worked out. And if Harry hadn't come in, I mean, listen, who knows where I'd have been? I, I don't think I'd have been sat here now. And I don't think it, you know, it sounds dramatic to say that, but I, I literally needed someone to say, you're playing, you're mm. my man. So you got your move to Liverpool, mm. and I know how much the fans think of you there. Mm. And I mean, but it took you four months, Geese, to score you. And I remember watching Match of the Day when you scored which can only be described as one of the most baggiest goals. <laughs> but the whole of the country... Two own goals. <laughs> hit the defender and then the keeper palmed it in. The whole of the country was willing. Oh. I think I was watching it just like that. Go on, Craig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, like, it, I did feel that, you know. Like, there was a lot of people that felt like there was a lot of people in the, in the country laughing at me. And Sorry, did you feel the pressure? No, like the sort of oh. level of clubs you was playing at. And then Liverpool... Moment next, I, mate, the moment I went there. And I wanted to... I wanted to um, do whatever the manager says, you know. Like right. I was like, whatever he said goes. And I was playing in sort of, sort of like almost a deeper position and working so hard off the ball. Mm. I was never in the box. I was yeah, never. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I got away from the things that got me there, you yeah. know, like being the main man, being the target in the box. You know, I got because I, I was so eager to please. Yeah. And I think Liverpool fans took to me because of that. They could yeah. see how hard I was working yeah. and how much I wanted it to happen. And then. Um, you know, it was it was a tough time and, and the toughest time of my professional life. Yeah. Like, it was so hard. Like, I, I, I felt like I didn't want to leave the house, you know, one yeah. of those, because it got to the stage where it became... I was getting ridiculed on, yeah. on a national level, you know? Yeah. And, that, and lots of other clubs, and I know it might sound a bit like a cliche, but lots of other clubs would have, would have, would have turned on yeah. a player, you know? But it felt like it, it was... I was in... The Liverpool mm. circle, and it was us v everyone mm. else, and th they didn't care. They were like, they were all willing to me, me to score every game, and mm. it felt felt that like that. I was so glad I got the next, the second in the same game yeah. to sort of put that to bed because it was a shocking goal. But um, yeah, and then and then it just things just I'd lift off there. You did find your feet. You scored goals. You won the FA Cup. Talk to me about that day as well, because you, yeah. you must have been a, a great day in your career. Yeah. Without that, it was huge. I mean, that yeah. was the, 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 the country stopped for yeah, the FA Cup yeah, final yeah. day. Me and my dad, it was our thing. We'd yeah. watch the final, we'd sit yeah. down all day, we'd prepare for it, you know, yeah. play football in the morning, we'd come back, we'd watch yeah. the buses come in, yeah. we'd look at the suits and yeah. you'd look at the player level, it fresh boots, new kits. It was the biggest day of the year, it was always hot. And um, yeah, so for me, then to win it with, with Liverpool, um, and that was probably the most emotional I ever got on the pitch. Was yeah. like, you know, because looking up at, and seeing my dad yeah. and holding the cup, yeah, uh, and thinking of all those things came through through my mind. Going, you know, of all the good times that we had watching it growing up, him, yeah. him taking me to football, bringing me back, my mum going through all, and then for me, it felt like you know, I, you know, got we won it together. Yeah. yeah. So it was a special. It was a special moment, and yeah, it's bit, it choked yeah. me up a little bit because it was, you know, I'm thinking of all those times. Yeah. Champions League final, mm. and you, like you said, playing the time of your life. What was the thinking with only 15 minutes? Oh, mate, honestly, this is the one that gets me... Uh, you know, I don't have many regrets, but this is yeah. the one that sort of, like, really sticks out in my mind because, for me, I'd scored... I was our top goal scorer in Champions League that yeah. year. You know, I think I was level with Kaka, right, going into, mm. the, into the final. And... Um, uh, if, you know, amazing. Who was Ballon d'Or winner, yeah, at, by you know the way? I mean? so you know, like, you know that, this doesn't happen often. Yeah, yeah. Like, I knew this doesn't happen often, yeah. right? So I'm thinking, like, play me in the final, I might, could potentially score, be the top goal scorer, we could win the Champions League. You know, this is what's going uh, through yeah, in my yeah, head. Yeah. And, um, and then to get told before the game, you know, having played most yeah. games, I think every, almost all of the games... Did, did he tell you? Did he the, pull yeah, you? Yeah, just, you? No, 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 didn't pull me. No, oh. I was just up on the board. Really? Um, you know... I'm not playing. He played dirt kite up front and packed five in midfield. Yeah. And I, you have that sick feeling at the bottom of your, bottom of your, you know, this is the biggest game of my life. I'm, not, I'm like, oh my God, I'm not in it. And like the goosebumps come and I'm like, yeah. oh, oh my God, I can't believe this. And then you go from shock to anger. Yeah. And you think, why is he not playing me? Like, I'm going to yeah. say something, you yeah. know. And then what I usually do, I think you probably did the same, most players do, you get on the phone to your dad and you just yeah. rip ben. him to shreds. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As he playing there, I mean, this, that, you know, that's what you just get it all off your chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than say that to the manager, yeah. um, you know, you just get it all off your chest there, and then you start thinking, why hasn't he picked mm. me? You start you, then the reason comes mm. in, and you start thinking, maybe he's doing this, maybe he's doing that. Yeah. I can't say anything because this is the biggest game mm. of everyone's life, yeah. not just mine. All the fans have cut. Yeah. This is, some things are more important yeah. than my selfish, personal. Yeah, but that's thing. that's a credit to who you are as a person because I've seen plenty of players oh. disregard all of that. Do you know what I mean? Gone. And yeah. gone. Got in, yeah. 100%. Yeah, but you've got, you got to remember that this is the biggest game of everyone's life and the, everyone's, tra you know, it, yeah. how selfish would it be for me to go and upset all of that? And yeah. even if it was a 2% chance that yeah. I could have upset one player, yeah. you know, you wouldn't do it. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously I was fuming, I was angry, but. Obviously, I'd get it off my chest to my dad. Um, and, and also, you know, I had a conversation with Rafa on a, after the game and I told him what I felt, but I wasn't as hot-headed as I would yeah. be before the game. Yeah. But this, this, um, this Milan team, in my opinion, was the, was the Milan team that you could get. Like, yeah, they, yeah. They, were, they were a couple of years older yeah. than the 2005 team. They were there for the taking. I, I felt we had a better yeah. team. If you look through our team... Yeah. You know, Mascarano, Gerard, Alonso. Yeah. You know, Dirk. Even if he didn't play me. Yeah. Play another one with Dirk up front. You yeah. Know, we, had, we had Fowler, we had Bellamy. And yeah, me. yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think Bellamy could have stretched them. Yeah. I, I, it's not, it's not, I'm not saying it's all about, oh, I should have played. I'm yeah. saying just play a more attacking got team, it, he, I, I felt. He got it wrong. I think so. No. Um, but, but, you know, he got us there and I, I would never... Slag Raffer as a manager, I think he's fantastic, but I just felt on that day he got it wrong. He said, you're bang average players in a fantastic system. <laughs> <laughs> That's a belt, isn't it? Well, I can't argue with that. <laughs>When I played for England, I, from the moment I arrived there, I, I, felt, I felt like I was going to score in every game. Yeah. And it's weird and it's like, I don't know, it's something about Champions League football yeah. and, and international football. I yeah. found it easier than the Premier League. Me bizarrely. too. Yeah. Me Did too. you, do you agree? Yeah, 100%. I, don't, like, I felt like the, the defenders in the Premier League like, felt like they didn't know how to handle me and yeah. I knew that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, International football and Champions League as well, I, I just felt like I was going to score in every game. Yeah. I've got a good record in Europe and I've got a good record in international football. But we, the players that I was playing with, you know, you were on one side, I had Bex on the other side. I've got yeah. Lampard, Gerrard. Yeah. Um, you know, everything was just geared up for me. Gary Neville down the right, yeah. Ashley Cole over, like, you know, like everyone was getting crosses in. Yeah. I felt like I was going to score in every game. Do you remember your first goal? I do, yeah. I remember the man who set it up. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on the plate for you, big man. <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of double step overs, cut inside, yeah. whipped it in, and then uh, I, I had a, it was a header at the um, yeah, Anfield Road end. Uh, and yeah, 1 0 against Uruguay. Yeah. 1 0, maybe. 1 1, I think it won it, whatever. We won the game 2 1. And uh, yeah, I notched a winner as well, but we just dropped that one in as well. <laughs> No, but listen, all them hard times you went through, they were setting you up for going through. Totally, I totally agree with that. Like, I've had to... My whole life was the stigma associated with our look and that yeah. that that can't be a footballer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, that is, that's how... Well, yeah. I've, I've had that my whole life. I even had it with England. I don't know if yeah. you remember the game at Old Trafford. I think it was Poland, where yeah. I was coming on for Sean Wright Phillips and there was a bit of the fact that I was playing for Liverpool yeah. and a bit of the fact that, um, you know, I was having... Uh, I was going for a bumpy road... And I got booed coming on for England. Harry Maguire's had it recently, you know. Like I, I remember coming on and thinking, well, I was like, whoa, yeah. wasn't ready for that. Yeah. Um, but then overcoming that, and then obviously going on to, to have the England career that I had, like I think it did stand me in good stead. Yeah. And that's why you thrived. But Liverpool, you left in 2008. You've gone to back to Portsmouth, back with Harry. Like, like leaving Liverpool was a was a huge wrench, and I I I, I think that. I could have gone anywhere in the world and it would have been a, doubt, it would have been a yeah, backward yeah. step. It, it's just, playing for Liverpool was so special. But I knew that I was playing for England and I, th I, I, I have to leave. Fernando yeah. Torres comes in, right? He's on absolute yeah, fire. Yeah. And um, I just thought, oh, you know, I'm not going to get a game. I, I need to move on. I'm, I wasn't happy just being a substitute. Yeah. I had aspirations of playing for England. So I went to, I looked at the team at Portsmouth and, you know, Harry in charge. Won, just won the FA Cup, finished top six in the league. Yeah. I'm thinking now we had one or two players to this, we go Champions League. Like yeah, that's, yeah. that's how I'm thinking. And we were tuning up against AC Milan in the UEFA Cup up yeah. Stratton Park. Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho had to bend in a free kick in the last minute. It was just 
amazing, crazy times. Yeah. But those nights were special. You know, imagine, yeah. I mean, the place is jumping at any, any game. But that game, and levels just went up. And uh, I remember Glenn Johnson was on fire. Um, Khan, we, we, we had such a good team. And um, we should have beat them. So Harry brought you back to Portsmouth, then he brought you to Spurs as well. <laughs> That's it. That's exactly right. So, listen, you know, he bought and sold me quite a few times, but um, I always loved playing for him yeah. and I played the best football of my life under yeah. him. I mean, people joke about it with, with yourself and Harry, like, and, and everything, but it's not on you. If you're a manager and you know you've got three or four good players and you're trying to build a team, it's, it's normal. But you he also knows back. Tottenham at that time, you know, there was, a, there, there was Ramos and they were in the bottom three for like, it was ridiculous the, yeah. with the amount of talent they had. Yeah. And he took over and he just made things a lot easier and, and, and he brought players in that he knew he could trust. Yeah, you had head of a team as well. The team was unbelievable. Yeah. Like playing with Modric and Van der Vaart and yeah. Nedley King and you know, the players, Bale, yeah. um, Lennon. We had yeah. you know, Defoe, we, we had so, Pavlichenko, Robbie King. We had so many good players and yeah. we got into the it's Champions League in the first time in Tottenham's history um, and we had some great times. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a hell of a team. It's just, just a shame that you didn't win anything at Tottenham. Mm. So a little dig in there for Spurs. Sorry, <laughs> Tony Pulis, Stoke, mm. gone from playing for Liverpool, Portsmouth, mm. Tottenham. You play on the deck. Mm. You know, how did you adjust? Re I suppose readjust because mm. people would have seen that you that in your early career to that style of football with Tony. Yeah. But you had a great time at Stoke, and and the longest you've yeah you've been at any yeah, other. I signed at thirty. I right. retired sort of. You know, went to Burnley, but I, yeah. I was thirty eight. Yeah, you know. So listen, you know, there were times where I got frustrated, yeah. but I bought into it um, because. I understood, like, when I arrived there, there were lots of players playing above themselves. Mm. Um, but, but the attitude and the camaraderie in the group that he had built yeah. was amazing. It was one of the best yeah. dressing rooms I've ever been really? a part of. You just you just knew that you, you were going into battle every day and you were going to get a result because yeah. of the work rate, the attitude, the endeavour, the dedication. You know, like, it was a great yeah. dressing room. And we, I mean, Arsenal was our home banker. We yeah. made things, we made things oh, difficult. Oh, we had Wenger on oh, a bit of we, toast, listen, Honestly, we, we just made things difficult. Like, yeah. I reckon we could have been, I reckon at that time we were the only team that could have beaten Barcelona. We just made things... If Messi and Iniesta came to the Britannia at that time, I think I reckon we could have turned them over because we made it horrendous for teams. I, know. Like, I remember seeing we, we we trained in the middle of the pitch before we played Arsenal. Yeah. Um, on the Friday, just to cut it all up so they couldn't play. <laughs> and then we, the grass was grown longer, and I remember looking at Aaron Ramsey and he, he couldn't see his boot. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he went, he was like crashing. I went, I. That's just what we do here. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant. Tony always said, and, you know, fair play to him, that like, he could at that, but he didn't play. His best line of all time for me was yeah. when we, he felt like we were getting ahead of ourselves. And um, this is my, one of the best lines I've ever heard in football. He said, um, he said, don't get ahead of yourselves, lads. He said, you're bang average players <laughs> in a fantastic system. <laughs> <laughs> That's a belt, isn't it? <laughs> well, I can't argue with that. <laughs> I went to Burnley, and you yeah. say you in the company, but like the quality in yeah. that in that oh, my first training session, right? I was I was surprised by yeah. how much ability there was in that dressing room. You don't stay in the Premier League and play as many games in the Premier League because football's mm. unforgiving as this group of players do without yeah. them having quality. So mm. listen, you finished it there anyway, and we talked about it. Was it at one point you said you was being used as a head? You felt you was being used as a head on the stick, and I love that analogy. My quote felt like I could have played on. Yeah. But I just didn't felt that was the right thing to do, and I had other things, you know, that I wanted to achieve and do, and um, I decided to to retire. Quick fire round, yeah. What one moment of your career would you go back and relive if you could? There's individual moments. There's specific goals. Um, might, that, that that goal for Stoke, you might have been that 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 was pretty special. Yeah, that that was that was a beautiful goal. Like, Over a kick. Aesthetically, the, yeah, the Champions League, the scissor kick against Galatasaray, cop end, yeah. Hatchet against Arsenal. These are personal things, yeah. but that goal that got Tottenham into the Champions League at Man yes. City away, I've never seen yeah. an away end like a buzz like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that buzz as a goal was probably yeah. the biggest buzz I've ever had. Yeah. Like, it was huge. 
you know, even even getting through to the Champions League final, obviously beating yeah, you boys, yeah. that was a special night. But I think winning the FA Cup was probably the biggest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Name one team you didn't play for that you wish you did. Sampdoria was a team of mine that I like when I, Viali, Ooh. Mancini, that that the, yeah. the team of the um, the nineties retro uh, retro team had both kits home and away. That would have been a nice team to play for. But listen, Bar Barcelona, Real Madrid are the two yeah. any player wants to play for. A manager you would have liked to have played under? Do you know it's someone that I think you, you played for? Um, Carlo Ancelotti. Oh, um, you'd have loved him. Yeah, everyone said that. You know, you'd like, have loved like, him. Like, I speak to you, like yeah. JT, Lamps, yeah. um, Ashley. Yeah. Everyone said that, like, how good and what he's achieving now with Real Madrid and, you know, AC Milan yeah, yeah. teams. The, you know, he's been successful wherever he's been. I know. But everyone loves him. There's such a humility about him yeah. as well. Like, I agree, 100%. If you could have played alongside anyone in your career, who would it have been? Uh, lots of people have who's the best player. My favourite player of all time yeah, yeah, yeah. was Brazilian Ronaldo. I think he could do things that no one else could has ever done before or since. Um, so I would play with him. Yeah, no, nah, what a player. Mm. Best atmosphere you've played in? Yeah, bit of a weird lot. Obviously, like special occasions at Anfield. That would be the obvious yeah. answer. Amazing. But there were, I always remember there was one game where we played we played Besiktas away. Oh, yeah, and, I've um, been there. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. That, for me, that was like, people say intimidating atmosphere. Like, I loved that kind yeah, of like, yeah. You know, like welcome to hell stuff when you yeah, go to yeah. Istanbul with Galatasaray, yeah. and that's amazing. But when you, like, when you walk in, like, I walked into that Pacific, and it was like, it felt like there was the only demographic was 18 to 50, 45, 50 year old men. Yeah. Right? No yeah. women, no children, no yeah. family section. Everyone was just bouncing like this yeah. up and down. We came out, and this was well, hour and a half before kickoff. You know, when you yeah. come out with the program, yeah. and you just think, you know, I just have a little walk around in the stadium. You come out and the whistles and jeers and yeah, uh, we just go. Well, let's just like, walk back in. <laughs> <laughs> you go uh, touch uh, it. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, a, it's was, a stud. It's a stud. Like, there. <laughs> There's that really long leg from the dugout. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a stud. I think we go back in again. But like that, I mean, playing in Turkey, that's just different level. Yeah, it's, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. We sit down with we sit down together watching football, but it's interesting to get into your perspective of your career. Mm. It's been a great career. And like I said, national treasure. Thank Tom you, Crispy. <laughs> Go on, Peachy. <laughs>